Welcome everyone. It is so wonderful to see you on this Sunday, sunny afternoon. What a beautiful way to, uh, to spend the next hour together with our community. Uh, we'll take a couple of minutes and let everybody get settled when they come in. If you're in a space where you're able to turn on your cameras, go ahead and do so so that we can see your faces as you see our faces in that way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're waiting a couple more minutes as people enter our Zoom room of BJBE Meet the Artist this afternoon. We'll give it another second as you get settled. You're all muted, so um, don't worry um, if you're thinking, oh, Oh my gosh, they can't hear me, or I can't hear them. I know you can hear me, um, but you are all muted at this point in time. So don't worry. If you uh, are on a computer in the right hand corner of your screen, you see a little box that says view. Uh, and you can be on gallery view right now where you will see everybody coming into our Zoom room. Uh, but if uh, in a moment, when we start, I'm going to ask you to switch over to speaker view so that you will have um, the most optimal experience of viewing our artists um, and, uh, and watching them work and watching them show uh, and exhibit their art. So I think we'll get started. It is 4.05. So friends, I have to tell you that this is um, something that uh, I've been thinking a lot about in putting a program like this together, um, especially for the past few months while we are um, living in this pandemic and coming to see um, and experience art um, is taking on a whole new meaning um, in, in this pandemic reality where we're not able necessarily to experience art in 3D um, to experience it in community, the way we know how to experience it, to go through and to walk through a museum, to go and hear, um, you know, the Lyric Opera or um, the Chicago Symphony. And so we thought the next best thing would be to bring the arts to us, bring the arts to BJBE. And not only that, but to actually visit with the artists that are in our community and to have, as I put it to them just a minute ago, um, a window into their soul. To be able to come into this community and to say, wow, I, I might have been at Shabbat Oneg or sat next to this person um, in services or walked the halls of BJBE um, and I didn't even know who they were or what they were capable of. And so we start our artist series this afternoon with two extraordinary artists, uh, two different mediums of art, of course. Margot Schwartz Newton, who is no stranger to us, um, is our beloved, uh, I would say, um, collaborator uh, extraordinaire, I would say partner in crime, but that's not really even what I mean, um, but, but we are sometimes, um, to be able to come in together, to be together. Um, she is extraordinary gift to our community um, and uplifts our art and our worship uh, and our music. Uh, in this community. So in terms of her actual bio, um, I'll, I'll give you a snippet, but she's gonna really talk more about who she is and what she does and why she does what she does. Um, she uh, received a piano performance degree from Roosevelt University, a master's degree in collaborative piano. I love that word, by the way, collaborative, from the Cleveland Institute of Music. Um, she is the managing director of Darche Noam in Glenbrook. Um, she has been the artistic administrator of the Chicago Chamber Musicians. Um, she is also um, the, uh, are you the assistant conductor and kind of managing human for Kolzim Ra, um, which is our, you'll hear more about that actually. Um, and of course she works with BJBE and she's collaborated with several, several, several um, Jewish musicians and musicians 
Muslims uh, in Chicago and also uh, all over the country. Um, she, of course, uh, is mom to Oliver and, um, and partner to Joel and wife to Joel in that way. And um, we are just so happy that you're here this afternoon. Um, so thank you, thank you. Here comes Oliver. <laughs> Excellent. And of course, we have Leslie Uten with us. Leslie is also no stranger to our community at BJBE, but you may not know that she actually began her professional life as a teacher with a bachelor's in education from the University of Miami. And then after her, her children, um, as she puts it, left the nest, um, she really decided to pursue her artistic career. Um, and in 1994, she graduated from the American Academy of Art with degrees in painting and illustration. She also has uh, a beautiful business uh, with calligraphy and illustration. Um, and she'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, she's a member of the Oil Painters of America, the Portrait Society, American Impression Society, the Palette and Chisel Academy of Fine Arts. How cool is that? Um, and these are two individuals that uplift our community and are just part of our community. So today, as I told them, and I'll tell all of you, today is a conversation. Today is a conversation for them um, to express what inspires them and how they got to do what they do. Um, and for us to, um, to listen in and to learn um, who they are and the type of artists that they are. So we're gonna start um, with Leslie um, in conversation. Uh, so um, Leslie, the first question that I just want you to kind of answer and tell everyone is, um, how did you become interested in this medium of art and in art in general? Um, and maybe talk a little bit as I know you will as you show some of your pieces about, about your artistic process. So let's go ahead and ask you to unmute there. You should be able to now. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Terrific. Well, um, this is a story uh, that goes back to when I was seven years old, actually. This is the very beginning. I went with my family for a two-week vacation to Florida, uh, and we were trying to escape the Chicago winter. And uh, back in those days, children were free to roam and not be under the tutelage of their parents. And so I was walking around the pool where there were cabanas and I saw in one of the cabanas a very bright light. And so I peeked in and it was the first time I ever saw anything like this. It was a male artist painting a portrait of a woman. And I was in awe and he motioned me to come in and stand behind him. And I watched as he painted this woman and brought it to life on canvas. And I never saw anything um, like that before. I was totally mesmerized. And then I, I just remember that between the smells of the oil and the varnish and his process of painting, it was intoxicating. And I was totally seduced to know that that's what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, it didn't happen till much later in life. And um, I did different art things throughout, but I did want a formal education. And that's why I went back to school when my children went off to college. And um, this whole process of art is not something you go to school and then you're done with. It's ongoing learning forever and ever and ever. And one of the pieces that I'll um, share um, is, you know, having that in the back of my head too, of seeing that portrait painted at such an early age. I do uh, still life, I do, city and um, urban and rural scapes, I always come back to people. I love people and I love to capture something about them that I hope can create an emotion within somebody else. Mm. This is one that I did 
um, of my mother, uh, she had, was, I knew there was a missing, she had Alzheimer's. And um, I posed her in different pictures and this is the one in different poses I wanted to do this one because it was a very contemplative time. And um, so this is uh, one of the pieces that's kind of close to me because it was a very strong turning point within both our lives um, of what she, what was ahead for her. And um, with uh, people, again, I'm, I, this is a quick study I've done of, of just uh, an emotion within this woman uh, that was modeling that um, made me want to get to know a little more about her and uh, what she was about. I'll show one more. This is, um, this is a model that um, he looks like, he looks scary, but when you really look in his eyes and I got to know him, he was, he's the most gentle person, uh, one of the most gentle persons I know. And uh, that's what I wanted to capture within this piece mm. is the difference between sometimes what we see on the outside is really not what is inside. And so that's-, that's uh, It's so beautiful, Leslie. And, and it makes me think, um, you know, as you keep saying, you've said in, in all of the conversations that we've been in, I just come back to people, I love people. And so when you're painting a person, is it what captures you first? Is it the outside aura? Is it, and then you dig more deeply, is it looking into that person's eyes if it's a model or, and if there isn't a model there, is it just something that comes through your, your imagination, an image that flashed before you that just happens or? You know, I'm gonna tell you, I do a, a lot of painting, drawing off of nude, live nude models. And through that um, process, I've learned not to judge. We have very thin, emaciated looking models and heavy models. Mm -hmm. And it's an appreciation of the human body, no matter what shape they're in, the body is beautiful. And um, when you say an inspiration, there is one particular model that I like that is on the heavier side and I love drawing her because there's something after I draw it, it's like I want to hug her. There's something about her so that that communicates to me. And so um, the experience of going through so many models and their different issues or tattoos of things that I never thought I would see or where I would see, um, it opened up my eyes that we can't be judgmental. We have to just accept and look within that person. And whatever I'm painting, I try to do it in a way that might create an emotional response from the viewer. Beautiful, beautiful, Leslie. Thank you so much. We're gonna bring Margo onto the screen. And um, as she comes up, hello, love. Uh, I would love also, um, Margo, for, for us to have um, the this, this same question, and we've talked about this. What, um, what for you, um, how did you become interested in, in becoming a musician? Um, and, um, and how has that evolved? Um, going into where we are today. But first, first things first. Um, I, I, I've just always played. I honestly do not remember a time when I didn't. Um, so I must have started lessons about 
maybe age five or shortly before um, the piano I'm playing on when my dad had an apartment that was an early piece of furniture um, and he was my biggest fan. I just, I've just always played and I just like the sound of it. So I was like, well, then this is what I'm going to do for a living because what else would I do? Um, I was warned to have some other degree first as a backup. So it was sociology, great backup. Um, and, and then I, you know, called him one day and I said, look, this is what I'm going to do. So here I am. Um, I, I was very fortunate to have some influences though early on that ultimately led me in this really varied direction. Um, as an undergrad, the head of the department, Ludmilla Lazar, encouraged me as I think as I was approaching graduation to do more collaborative work because I was working in the voice studios and she said, hey, you know, maybe think about this go into this and then I just dove in. And uh, through just a, a series of being in the right place at the right time, I, I worked in the studio for my teacher in grad school at Cleveland and did some administrative work there, did some admin work at the Aspen Music Festival. That led to the admin job with the Chicago Chamber Musicians. I worked there for six years. I was still playing um, but I had this day job to support my professional habits and, um, and all that just, you know, one thing led to another ultimately then, uh, gosh, Jen, I think we're, we're like prom dates now. It's been so long. Um, and, and <laughs> I don't think I've ever been called that and <laughs> since my prom, <laughs> um, and, you know, I started working with you and, and. And that um, also led to working with Colzim Ra and, and things there even have evolved. So mm -hmm. um, I've just, I've been very, very fortunate to, mm -hmm. to just have this broad skill set that has led to so many unique things. Mm -hmm. And what, um, if I may ask, because you've had such a varied career and have your hands in, in so many different pots so to speak. Um, is, there, is there one thing that I don't want to say is constant because obviously that's the music in that way, um, but is there one thing for you that, um, you know, that stands out, that keeps you coming back, that you love more than anything, that um, whether it's a type of, you know, a genre of music or the people or the administrative work because it I, I don't know, as Leslie keeps saying, I go back, you know, she goes back to people and wanting to um, conjure up and, and, and form an emotional connection in that way. Is there something for you that is driving you in all of the different avenues, whether it was the voice studio or, you know, the UCLA stuff or the Aspen or like in that way, is there something for you? I don't, I, I, I don't know. I, um, I just sort of jump into whatever opportunity comes up next. And so the piece that I'm going to play, um, up until about a week ago, I haven't even looked at for 25 years. And, and as I told you when this first came up, I haven't done solo work in a very, very long time because I really like playing with others. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun and I get to experiment and, and do things that I couldn't, I can't do by myself. Mm -hmm. But then I came back to this and I was like, oh yeah, I remember how fun it was to play this. Mm. Um, but I, I can't say that I necessarily keep returning to something. Um, I mean, some of this stuff is a lot of work. I'm just, I'm too lazy for that these days. Um, all right, too busy. Sorry, I shouldn't say too lazy. Too busy. For Focus that. might be elsewhere. How about that? <laughs> there we go. Uh, but I just enjoy, you know, somebody's like, hey, let's do this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Beautiful. So here we are. So tell us what you're going to play for this I piece. I am going to play a piece by a Canadian composer named Alexina Louis. And I came upon this piece when I was an undergrad at a um, piano camp in Vermont. 
And at the time, this piece would have been, I don't know, five years old, um, five or six years old. So it was written in 1988. I did it on my senior recital in 1995. Y'all can do that math. And, um, and it's just really cool. Well, without further ado, let's hear it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. <laughs> it's um so we've known each other a long time and we've um and we've and we've played together a long time and uh nothing quite like that, huh? Wow. <laughs> um I have no words. I, I mean it, it's just it, it's extraordinary. Thank you. Um and uh so we could put that in Shabbos. Uh <laughs> Thank you, Margo. Thank you for enlightening us and for sharing that piece with us. We're gonna bring Leslie back onto our screen. And we're gonna spend a minute here or more talking about um, where you find your inspiration, Leslie. What inspires you? What inspires you to create your art? Okay, um, well, uh, like I said, being a representational artist, you're really an, an observer of life. And, and being an observer of life, you are observing the effect of light on everything. Uh, when I was uh, going to elementary school, it was K through eight in West Rogers Park and upper grades were on the second floor and I was lucky in the fifth grade to have my desk in the row near the windows. And I remember just looking out at the light and how it played on the leaves and the trunk of the trees. And um, it probably looked like I was daydreaming, but I was really observing science and taking in what was happening with the breeze and, uh, and the light effect on everything. I mean, even now I could sit in my house and just look out at the maple tree in my backyard at the trunk uh, of the tree and the light on the trunk and I can see faces in the trunk. I could see animals. I see it in everything. And so, um, and I've learned um, through the years that you really cannot paint unless you paint from life. You have to learn the colors by painting a live model. You have to go out and paint outside to understand the colors within uh, the outside. Here example, I was with my nephew when we were walking in Chicago and I took this picture on the Chicago River Walk. And I thought, well, this could make a nice piece here because I like the tower. And so I did that. And this was a finished piece that I did uh, from this picture. Even though the picture was taken outside, I knew how to enhance. And what happens with buildings as they are higher up into the sky, we lose that color because there's more atmosphere going around them. And um, what strikes me so beautifully, step back up one more time, sorry. Um, what strikes me so beautifully about that is as you were talking about um, painting things from life and from light, um, how so often we, we, you know, we walk from point A to point B and we don't know how we got to point B, you know, in our world in that way. We drive, we, we get in the car, we go to the store where, paying attention to driving in that way, but we're not paying attention obviously to our surroundings and as deeply as a way as, as obviously when you're creating art and in that. And what, what I notice in particular is um, the beautiful way that the light um, it is portrayed in, in this particular painting of yours um, with specific regard, especially to, to the river. Um, and uh, as almost you can see the reflection of yourself, you could find in that. Um, and it's just breathtaking. Thank you. And then it, I thought I might give it to my nephew who I was with, but then it sold. So I thought, well, I'm going to do another. One. <laughs> and um, I changed, I changed yeah. the values and made this a much cooler mm -hmm. uh, looking, cooler in temperature looking painting than this one. Yeah. Um, and it, it has a different 
different feel and different look to it, but it's, it's really the same. So we can alter um, our scenes and it's, it's really only through that knowledge of all the uh, years that I was painting outside that I, I learned to, to see the color like that. And so the inspiration comes in many forms. Sometimes it's just observing the light on the subject and sometimes it's music, can um, play music sometimes while I'm painting or drawing and, and that, um, that has an effect. Um, sometimes- you talk, you talk, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You talked when we were, um, when we were meeting in one of our earlier conversations just with you and, and Margo and, and me about, um, about the music that you find in your paintings um, in that way as well. <laughs> A perfect lead and wow. Have some of you seen this particular, I don't know, um, beautiful lamp um, that Leslie has in that picture. <laughs> this is a piece I did for BJBE and was asked to have something that would be on uh, the front of a card. Um, and when I was sitting in, uh, I walked around the temple, but I kept coming back. I love this lamp, but I looked at the lines around it and it's, it's musical to me. It's swinging, it's, it's moving. And even though the lamp is kind of stationary, all of this is going around this eternal light. Um, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite places to, to sit and look. Mm. So um, it gives me comfort because there is a skylight above and I always feel like the light of God is coming down through this light. And that's, I painted that kind of yellow. And then, um, and then the movement and the words around uh, the eternal light gives me comfort and it moves me spiritually mm -hmm. to sit and just, and just look. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you want me to take a minute and talk about the... I do. Okay, uh, I was commissioned to do a piece for um, Cantor Green as she was going to be leaving our congregation. In fact, I spoke with her last night. I thought maybe if she wanted to get on, she could, <laughs> she had another commitment. Anyway, I had a short period of time to come up with an idea and I kept walking around the temple, taking pictures from uh, statues and the ark and what's inside the ark and I wasn't sure what it was that I wanted to have Cantor Green take away as a memory of our temple. So I love this statue that's in our walkway and I, I think these windows have something to say in a different way and so I sometimes, a painting will come to me in a dream. And that's mm -hmm. what happened here. Wow. Uh, I didn't know what to do with all the pictures I took. And this is what came to me, is the statue and the windows. And then it kept evolving. And, and this is the eternal light in the small sanctuary. And so um, I thought, well, that's, that's kind of dark. And the light does put a light on that figurine. And so, and I thought, well, I think it's giving more light. And here it was, and what is coming out of that eternal light, but a message. And so the, the um, painting kept evolving as I kept going on with it. And, I gave it more and more light. And uh, this is the actual finished piece. Uh, this isn't the piece I gave it to Cantor Green, but this is, um, I had was, wasn't sure even what message came off of that eternal light. Here I have two different messages. So I wasn't sh sure until the, the end really. 
but um, but it was like the emergence of the love, love of people, children, family, our community is a family, definitely. And, um, and the eternal light and the messages that we get are always with us as well. Mm. And uh, I will say one last thing. Um, sometimes, um, and I, like I said, I hope this encourages people to feel when they look at it. Um, when we went back uh, and I did this, I forgot. I didn't put clothes on this person. And it wasn't until I have a very good friend who is, I call her my mem. Um, so why isn't she dressed? And I said, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> and so I, I added that it was, there was no reason for her not to be, but I added that at, uh, at the end, which, you know, she was, uh, I think looks like an Israeli uh, and, uh, and so sometimes the wires in my head get a little tangled up, but I'm very lucky to have uh, this friend and other art people that I can go to to help untangle them and uh, help me through my difficulties. Beautiful, so beautiful. And I know how much Cantor Green cherishes that, um, that particular painting. And what a gift to be able to have um, a window into uh, an artist's process. And to really, you know, as you just showed us from, from the outset of what was the inspiration between the, the, the window and the statue at BJBE and how, and how those continued to kind of morph and transform, um, you know, so often as, as um, people that walk through and just kind of see the finished product, right? I don't know about you, but I often wonder what was in the artist's mind? What do you think they were thinking? How did they start? Did, was that really what they had envisioned? Um, and we know as artists, once it's kind of out there, um, it's for the audience to interpret in that way. Um, so thank you so much um, for taking us through just a glimpse of what happens with one particular painting. Um, as you go through and really that process and how um, just incredible it is to be um, witness to your to your dream um, and to your process. So thank you, Leslie. Thank you. We're going to bring Margot back on. <laughs> it's like dueling artists, but not really. Um, so Margot, um, what where do you draw your inspiration, um, and how do you find? Um, you know, meaning and collaboration um, in terms of your process, because it really has been um, and morphed, as you've said, into, into real collaboration. And especially maybe if you could talk for a moment about, um, you know, what the kind of the past 10 months um, in a certain sense has kind of um, forced us into, <laughs> in a certain sense, a new creative sphere. Um, I I mean, like I said, I've just always played and just like the sound. Um, but then once I started playing with others, um, with singers in undergrad and chamber music in graduate school and um, even learning to improvise, which uh, I have to give props to Rabbi Kedar for that because I had never improvised until my first high holidays with you. And, and she had people coming up to the Bima for an Aliyah and said, Margo, play something. And there I was on the spot. Um, but it really just has been quite a journey. And, um, and I'm really inspired when I play more improvisational kinds of things, for instance, um, like with Andy and Marcus and Gary of Soul Zimra, when we've had the pleasure of playing together for Shabbat services, I, for me, that's a dream. It's like I get to play with the band finally. And um, I always wanted to be that. And it's so much fun and it feels really safe. Like I know on that Bima with whomever I'm playing, it's, it's safe. I can experiment. 
Um, I can just try new things and know that it's okay, even if it's, you know, not so okay, it's okay. Um, but this playing with others is just, it's really a blast and it's fun. And um, I really, I've had the great pleasure right about the time that I started playing and becoming a part of the BJBE family, I also was invited to play with Kol Zimra, Jewish community singers, who's another family and a huge piece of, of my um, current career. And, and um, you know, this 50 or 60 person choir, whatever we are, um, is amazing. We've been around for 25 years, even longer than you and I have worked together. And, um, but, you know, the last few months have been really uh, trying for performing artists. And there's no technology where we can really play together because there's always a lag. And director Pavel Reutemann, who's cantor at Beth Hillel, B'nai Muna, we've experimented, we experimented for months on how to make a rehearsal happen. And it was really important that this collaboration continue. And just like now, you're, you've provided this opportunity to share art and for a choir, um, for choir singers, there's nothing else like it. And without the people next to you singing and creating this large scale piece of art, um, nothing can match that. And so we've had rehearsals on Zoom. Our board president likes to say we're the best muted choir in North America. And I would agree. <laughs> Um, you know, and like other, other performing groups, we have pivoted into embracing technology because we have to, and that's how we can stay connected. Um, I feel grateful to have been given the opportunity to learn new skills and create new things. Um, we've made several videos in the last six months and we're putting together an entire concert for February 21st, you can go to colzimra.org and check it out. Um, and so many KZ people are here supporting me. Thank you, thank you. And, and really like the last few months have been, you know, you can keep your art to yourself or you can figure out how to share it. And we figured out how to share it. And you are muted. <laughs> I, I'm unmuting. I, I just said that it's incredible. And I think you're right. We can keep our art to ourselves, or we can figure out how to get it out into the world. That may not be exactly what we thought, but taking new, extraordinary, um, you know, experiences and creating new skills. And so um, we're actually um, going to watch a video that you put together uh, of Kozimra. Um, not only with you playing, but with your video editing skills. So um, Leslie, let's bring that up uh, so that we can see that. And then I promise you, you wanna stay for the next little segment because it's gonna be pretty cool.
So wonderful. Thank you, Margo. And I know how much Colzim Ra appreciates you as well they should um, and your new editing skills. We're gonna bring Leslie back up um, because as I said, um, this part of our, um, of our program um, is something um, that is kind of sort of brand new um, to both Leslie and Margot. Also um, a chance for them, this opportunity um, to really get to know each other um, as individuals and as artists. Um, this next piece, as they both talked about, Margo talked so beautifully about collaboration um, and how important it is um, as an artist for her artistry and collaboration. Um, and, and Leslie, I would argue even in your artistry collaboration with the models with whom you're painting and working in that way. Um, so um, this is something that they're gonna try and as um, they both kind of spoke about safety um, and being in, especially Margot, being in that safe space. Um, this Zoom room has now become, uh, for all of you that are here, a safe space um, for our artists to try something. Um, and we call this playtime or collaboration. Um, and this is a chance for um, Leslie to be able to paint um, a bit uh, as she's working on a particular piece um, while Margot is inspired by her painting um, and does uh, a bit of, um, of improvisational playing um, in that way. And, um, and we don't often get to see this um, in terms of, of this medium of art. And I will tell you, it's um, something that I have been blessed to experience um, for the past 14 years, um, going and spending my summers or at least two weeks at Olensang Ruby Union Institute um, with a beautiful, um, Ada, beautiful unit that was called Tiferet, um, where we had, um, visual art and drama and, um, and dance and, um, and music. And there was often moments where we would come together on a theme and say, we're just gonna do a collaboration and we're gonna read this particular passage and we're just gonna let our students um, explore their medium of art while everything was going on. Um, and so this was really um, my, my little chance to, um, to have that experience right here and right now with all of us. Um, so Leslie, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and move your computer um, over to the painting that she started just this morning, by the way, um, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. Um, and, uh, and as she gets ready to paint, um, Margot is going to play and we're just gonna kind of be flies on the wall and watch this happen for just a couple of moments, um, which is a really extraordinary experience uh, for all of us. So ladies, when you're ready. Thank you. 
wait for a minute for Leslie to get settled. <laughs> um, so first of all, I just, I wanna thank both of you um, for being vulnerable. Uh, I know it wasn't easy when I asked you both to think about um, collaborating together uh, in that way. So um, we have a, a couple more things that they're, uh, one, a one piece each that they're each going to present. Um, but if you wouldn't mind for um, maybe just a moment um, with a couple of words or two, um, what was that experience like for both of you? Margo. Oh, uh, <laughs> different. Um, I've not done anything of that sort before. So it was a little terrifying. Um, but it was really interesting and, and um, a new opportunity to just see what happens. And it really, really stretched me. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't stretch very far, but you know, I'm already outside my comfort zone. So within that outside, I remain kind of within, but, um, but it was really, it was, it was neat to do. And it was, um, it also gave me an appreciation for that visual art and kind of the, the timing of, of a brush stroke and then getting the right amount of paint and then a stroke or two mm -hmm. and the paint. And it was, I'd never really thought about it before. 
Beautiful. And lastly, for you, and just a couple of words. The music was beautiful, Margo. Thank you. Um, I paint to music a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm used to having uh, different music uh, going on while I'm uh, painting or drawing. And, um, and I love it. I mean, it, it just, to me, it's, it's another element to add to the disposition, to my own disposition. So thank you. Beautiful. And th really, thank you both for um, trusting each other and for trusting that this would be a safe space to delve a little bit um, out of the box and the lines of the comfort zone. And, um, and along those lines of collaboration, um, the last two pieces, um, both uh, piano and, uh, and, and painting that Leslie's gonna show um, are really uh, a collaboration in a certain sense uh, and, and fed off of each other beautifully. So Leslie, if you wouldn't mind um, taking a minute and showing this and um, telling us about her. Uh, which will lead into Margot's final piece. Okay, uh, this was uh, a model, and uh, at the time I didn't uh, get to paint her in a way I was pleased with, and so I started over, and I wanted to give her the flesh feeling of life, and uh, so uh, sometimes we have models that come in in uh, unusual attire, and it's wonderful, a uh, wonderful opportunity to have a, a dress model like this. So uh, I just, I wanted to experiment at home. I'm trying to push things more, whether it's outdoor scenes or the figure to give it more of a life-like feeling of being right there, having that person in front of me. Beautiful. She is definitely feels like she's right in front of us. Absolutely. Um, and Margo, how did um, this inspire your final piece? <laughs> well, when Leslie showed that portrait, um, it immediately made me think of um, the, the piece that I wanted to play. You'd asked earlier, like, what I come back to, and I haven't had a whole lot of repertoire that is Spanish, but I have had the opportunity to study intensively um, some Spanish music. And there's something about the passion of it that I'm really drawn to. And um, so if I could just do like Spanish art songs for a while, I would. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so um, let's uh, let's hear this in Spanish inspired, maiden inspired final piece. I am going to leave the two of you up and um, remove me so we can stare at the maiden and Margot's hands. <laughs> oh, and I will adjust. Well, also your face is beautiful too, honey. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
friends, uh, first of all, to our magnificent artists, Leslie and Margot. Thank you so much for an extraordinary hour of being together, of experiencing um, your art, your sensibilities, your process. Uh, as I said to you at the beginning and to us at the beginning, um, for showing us a window into your soul of who you are and what inspires you and what you love and what a gift the two of you are, um, not only um, to our community at BJBE, um, but to the larger artistic world for both of you and the gifts um, that you're giving to, um, of your art to the world. Um, and we cannot thank you enough uh, for being here, for being present. And um, if you enjoyed this evening or this afternoon, I should say, um, look for more in our artist series coming at the end of January will be our next one. Uh, and it's, as I said, just an opportunity for us to see windows into our artists' souls and to experience their art uh, in a way in which maybe we don't get to on a regular basis. Um, and especially um, in these dark times that this is a moment, uh, hopefully that brought just a bit of light uh, into your world and into your day and into your week. Uh, and we are so, so grateful to the two of you, um, to everyone that joined us this afternoon uh, to be with us. Please um, know that you can send notes to both Leslie and Margot, uh, thanking them. Uh, Leslie has a phenomenal website that you can go to and check out her, um, her artwork. And, um, and Margot, of course, lots of different ways to experience her music, not only at BJBE, but of course with Kol Zimra. Um, so you'll send us that information for that concert and we will um, make sure that everybody at BJBE knows about it so we can support you. We hope that you have a lovely and beautiful afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And most importantly, please, please, please uh, wash your hands, keep your distance, wear a mask, stay safe. Happy, happy holidays to everyone and happy light into this world. Thank you so much, Margot and Leslie. Have a wonderful day. Yeah.